finding queens can be really frustrating even for a professional beekeeper. So I'm just going to run through some of the, the tips and tricks that I employ when I go looking for a queen inside our hives. And one of the first things to do before we even open the hive is to make sure you're in a really comfortable position. You've got everything set up. The more organised you are, uh, the more comfortable and smooth the operation goes. The other thing we want to do is make sure we've got the sun at our back coming over our shoulder and I'll explain that in a minute. So I'm just going to pop the lid and take our honey super off. Just a little bit of smoke there. We go and get our honey super off and set it to one side. So just a little bit of smoke over the top. Putting too much smoke down tends to get the bees running around quite a bit and that's just going to make our task a little more difficult. The other really crucial thing is too much smoke down into your brood nest can actually mask the the smell and pheromones of the queen and all of a sudden your colony no longer recognizes the queen and it is possible that they can turn on her and, and ball her and kill her. So you've just got to be fairly judicious with the smoke that you use. So once we get the queen excluder off the very first thing you want to do is check the underside of the excluder at the moment. I've got no bees at all or just a few bees on here but sometimes you've got loads of bees on the underside of that excluder and you just want to check and make sure the queen's not running around there and just to be sure after you've scanned it and you're going to put that to one side you can either put it down in front of the hive or if you do pop it onto one of your honey supers make sure the underside is facing up just in case the queen's there and she runs down into your honey so with our brood nest exposed a little bit of smoke just over the top, nice and gentle. And then we've, what we've got to remember is our brood nest, our frames of brood are generally right in the middle of the box there. And that is where the queen is most likely to be. She's rarely running around out on the honey frames. So let's start by pulling one of our outer frames out to start with, the second or outside frame. Gently pull that out, look on that, and then we can create a little bit of space to work. This of course is the trickiest frame to get out because it's the one you're most likely to roll bees on when you're pulling it out against, it's a tight space and you, it's against the wall there. So nice and gently. I'm gonna bring that out have a close look on both sides and scan the frame. So one of the first things you want to ask yourself is why am I trying to find the queen? If it's just to know that she's in there then you might want to backtrack a little bit and just go looking for eggs. So if you can find eggs you know the queen's been there at least in the last three days. Now you can get a bit more information from those eggs by looking at the positioning inside the cell. When the queen first lays an egg, it's in an upright position, vertical. And then over the course of three days, it slowly lays down into a horizontal position in the bottom of the cell. That's just before it hatches out as a larva. So if you can see eggs in a vertical position, then you know you've had a queen in here in the last 24 hours. If that's all you're looking for the queen for, to make sure you've got a queen right colony, you can close up your hive and get on with business. Of course, there's plenty of other reasons to go looking for your queen. And let's run through a few of those tips now. After I pulled that first frame out and I've scanned both sides and I'm fairly confident there's no queen present, I'm just gonna set this frame down in front of the hive, lent up against the, the front of the hive here. And on, on the off chance that you do have a queen on that frame, 
is you either go and stay on the frame or she's going to walk back into the front entrance. So just another little puff of smoke here and we're going to get down to business. So remember I said it's great to have the sun coming over your shoulder. One of the reasons is it's projecting sunlight directly into the brood box there. Now the queen is pretty good at running away from the action and the light. She likes to go over into the dark. Now as a consequence, as I pull this first frame, she's unlikely to be on this surface that's closest to me because the sun's currently hitting that and she's more likely to have run under the frame to the other side at this point. So as I pull this next frame, the first place I'm going to look is back down into the box on the face of this next frame in. Because quite often you'll see the queen running around on that face, especially if the sun's coming in and hitting that and lighting those bees up. And then I'm going to start scanning this frame. Now, remember I said she's most likely to have run to the far side because the sun's been hitting this side. So that's the side we'll start with first. And my first eye movement is to scan the periphery of the frame. If she's running around out there, then she's likely to duck around to the other side very quickly. So a good scan of that. and then a quick flip to look at the edge. We can come back to the center of the frame afterwards. Now, what am I looking for? Of course, the queen's abdomen is the, the key difference when you look at a, uh, compare a queen with a, a worker bee. Her abdomen can be up to twice as long. And that's one of the things that usually catches your eye fairly quickly when you go looking for a queen. The other main difference with that abdomen is quite often it can be a completely different colour to the, the workers in the nest. So the queen can have a solid coloured abdomen and it can really range from a really light golden colour through to a solid black. The queens that are most difficult to spot are indeed the stripy ones. They've got a little bit more camouflage to run in amongst the other bees and hide. Now, the next difference between the workers and the queen to be aware of is her thorax. She's got a larger thorax. And indeed, it's that large thorax that prevents her squeezing through a queen excluder. The thing that happens with her thorax, indeed, with all the bees, is when they first emerge out of the cell, if you look closely at them, they all have a very hairy, downy thorax. It's covered in fine hairs. And as these bees age, as they work, as they rub against things in and out of the hive, that hair wears off. Now with a queen, she can live for years, not just weeks. And consequently, after a month or two, those hairs after she's been sticking her head inside cells to assess them whether to lay eggs in there or not, or fertilized or unfertilized eggs, the hair on her uh, thorax tends to wear off completely. And not only that, her thorax tends to become quite black and shiny. And it's another little jewel that we're looking for when searching for the queen. It quite often sticks out quite notably. And now I've spotted our queen running around on the frame inside here, straight down inside there. So let's get this one out. And there she is. <clears throat> So you might be able to see that she's got quite a bright orange abdomen just with a little bit of black at the tip of her tail. It does stand out quite a lot against the other bees. So I'm going to grab her and mark her now. If I can get her. Pop 
run back in this thing. Now I know this this colony repu replaced they have superseded their queen recently. So I know she's quite a new queen. I'm going to give her a little green mark for 2024. And that will make her easier to spot next time I go looking for a queen in here. That's if she's in here. And this is why I don't really recommend just relying on a marked queen to find her in the hive because if the colony has swarmed, she's been superseded or died for some reason and been replaced, if you're just going looking for a marked queen, it might be easy to spot as there a marked queen that it's going to be impossible to find an unmarked queen in there without any great luck. So she's got a bright green dot on there. I'll pop her back and she'll get back to business. Now what do you do if that queen flies off while you're doing your inspection? Well don't panic. They can usually find their way back in but there's one really important thing to do and that is to try and stand here for as long as possible. I've got another video uh, that I'll put a link to which shows a queen flying off when I was catching a swarm and I've got some really good tips in that one as to what to do if your queen flies off. But anyway the queen's back in the brood. We can now finish our inspection and then close up our box Secure in the knowledge that we've got a nice healthy queen in there. She's laying a nice brood pattern and she's got some very nice calm offspring, which is great to know. Okay, so let's just run through some of those tips and tricks just very briefly one more time. To start with, step one, make sure you're all set up got everything nice and organized it's nothing worse than say your smoker going out just as you need it step two make sure the Sun is behind your back casting light directly into the hive so that you're not looking into the shadows trying to find the Queen remember too much smoke is a bad thing it gets the, the bees running around makes it hard to find the Queen it can also lead to disaster if they decide that they no longer recognize the queen and they, they kill her. When you pull that queen excluder off, remember to look very carefully at the underside of the queen excluder. Make sure the queen's not running around there. And then when you put it to one side, make sure you put it in a spot where the, she can either run back into the hive or she doesn't end up down in one of your honey supers. The most likely location she's going to be is in that brood nest, right in the middle. So that's why we start pulling the outside frames first. She's unlikely to be running around on the honey or the pollen frames. She's more than likely going to be in the brood nest. Ask yourself why you're trying to find the queen. If it's just to make sure you've got a queen right colony, look for eggs. And if you can find them, your job is done. The first place you're looking when you're pulling the frames is onto the next frame in on that, that surface, that vertical surface, hopefully with the sunlight shining down. I more than often spot her running around on that particular spot. When you start scanning the frame, scan the edges first. She hates the attention, she hates the light and she's more than likely to duck around the edge of the frame and onto the dark side of the frame. So the two things that really catch my eye when I'm looking for the queen are her longer abdomen, which is often just a solid color and different from the other bees. It tends to stand out. And of course her thorax, it's like it, it gets dark and shiny the older she gets and quite often that will catch my eye as well. If you're up for it, you can mark your queen. It does help to find a queen, but remember if your hive is swarmed or the queen has died and or been superseded for some reason you'll really struggle to find the queen so really practice looking for the other signs that we've discussed so if the queen does fly off while you're doing this job the first thing is don't panic she'll probably find a way back in anyway and check out the video in the description below where a queen had flew off while I was catching a swarm and I've got lots of tips and tricks in what you need to do if that actually happens to you. 
I hope you found this video really useful. Down in the description, you'll find a checklist of all these tips and tricks that I've discussed here today. You'll also find a link to some other videos on our YouTube channel. They're a queen finding challenge. You can go test your queen finding ability by looking for a queen on a frame. We'll give you an answer at the end of that. So if you can't find her, don't worry. And if you've got any other tips that you can add to this discussion, please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. If you've got questions, please let us know in the comments once again. Anyway, it's a beautiful day for beekeeping. So I'm about to get back to it. Enjoy the next time you get into your hives and good luck with finding those queens.